Hey guys, my name is Shai and I'm coming on here to wish everybody a happy new year. <laughs> I hope everything has been going smoothly for you because tuning into the energy here, it kind of feels like getting hit over the head with a frying pan. One of those old timey cast iron <laughs> frying pans. In fact, I was kind of dragging my heels to make this video because every time I tuned into the energy, I, it was that feeling of like, bam, like bong, like like resonating um, after some kind of series of strange events, right? Um, there's something strange about this, this new year. I'm not really getting the sense of like fresh start the way I normally would, or especially the way I did last year. It feels more like dragging yourself forward after a period of shock or just overtaxing yourself. Um, and it's funny, you know, I don't even have any new cards or any new spreads or new, any new anything. Um, it's as if there's some kind of lingering energy still. And, you know, we have Venus retrograde right now, which had a huge, a huge impact over the December holidays and definitely still lingering right now. And so um, before I get into this, I'm talking so much about like my specific like date, time, because I'm actually, this is the first of a series of videos where I'm kind of shifting how I'm doing readings. Not all of my readings are gonna be like this, but um, for 2022, I am setting the intention to do weekly energy readings. So every single week on Sunday, um, I'm gonna sit down and do like kind of take the pulse or catch the, the general vibe for the week. And um, it's it's a little tricky because I really, really feel that all of my readings are completely timeless. And you know, I basically feel that way for all all kinds of messages, all kinds of information. Um, but really, I have been repeatedly, like over and over and over again, guided to do readings that are just timeless, that that don't even really synchronize with any calendar date or even with any astrological date. Um, like I've never really gotten into doing new moon or full moon readings or anything like that. But this year I really feel um, called to take the pulse as the weeks go by throughout the year. Um, but of course, if you're seeing this in the future or any of these videos, if you watch them out of order, um, all completely timeless, but it, it, there's this blending happening. It's this paradox of timelessness and timeliness, right? Bringing, um, I don't know, it's, it's hard It's hard to put my finger on it because it's what we're gonna be learning about for this entire year. Um, how we weave together timelessness with grounded linear reality, like everything merging together. So that's gonna be my experiment for the year. And yeah, every week, I think I'm also gonna be talking about any interesting astrological events. That'll give me a chance to talk more about that you know, because obviously I try not to talk about it too much in my timeless readings, but <sighs> so what do we got going on? Besides the calendar new year, it's also new moon and Capricorn um, at the beginning of this week and the Venus retrograde. Those are, I think, the most significant transits we have going on right now. And Trying to think, there's something going on with Mercury and Mars, but I will get more into the astrology next week because I am not um, not able to think straight. <laughs> not able to think straight right now. There, there's like a, you know, the Capricorn new moon is the densest time of year and how you deal with that really varies. Some people love Capricorn energy and Capricorn season and it's a big energy high. Other people, it's they really just experience it in terms of the density, how dense it is, how, how it weighs them down. Um, so you can go either way with that. But for everybody, I think regardless of whether it's charging you up or dra dragging you down, the Capricorn new moon, especially this one, is like... <laughs> that motion my hand is making, that's what it feels like. It feels like... Um, like rolling up a ball of lint or like a bunch of sticky tape. Imagine if you had like a bunch of, what, what is this? 
what do you what kind of substance do you ball up like that you have a bunch of stuff on the on the table and you can like ball it up and it comes into a ball i mean maybe making a snowball like like that or a dough ball or some kind of like sticky glitter i don't know it feels like balling something up balling something up balling something up and then but also trying to balance on the top of it so it's a little bit strange let me get some cards out and <laughs> two of swords yeah so i'm not the only one having trouble thinking clearly um, feeling like we're not sure what is up ahead. Page of Wands, but recklessly charging ahead anyway. Okay, I like to see this Page of Wands um, with this fox because I, um, before I turned on the camera, a strong impression I was getting is that this week, um, you know, January 2nd to whatever, <laughs> is... Um, gonna end quite differently than it begins and because it's this this weird stillness this weird like you just don't know which way is up with this two of swords that's what it feels it's like which way do i go which way do i go not seeing something clearly but this spark okay this page of wands this spark is going to get you rolling again right you're going to start digesting all of the last of the holiday food right um you're gonna get back into your routine back into the swing of things but mm, this isn't this is this is like uh, maybe your new year is not the fresh start that you wanted it to be maybe you maybe you know ideally you would have hoped for like a brand new beginning but this is going to be like you might find yourself going to the same job or just going through the same daily routine. It's the same thing, but you are looking at it differently, right? The, so if this doesn't happen to you naturally this week, try to remember that. How can you look at your situation differently? How can you change your situation by only changing your perspective or by changing your attitude or by changing your emotions, by changing the thoughts running through your head? This, it's like, you might find yourself in the same environment, the same situation, but if you can look at it with new eyes and if you can change your own energy inside of yourself, change how you're dealing with the situation, change how you're dealing with the people around you, change how you're, just change your mindset. This is like the change comes from within and it's that is the spark that will get you going. And look at those two, did another card come up? Uh, there's that beautiful owl. Okay, <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. By the end of the week, you're going to have made up your mind. Okay. <laughs> um, th this is this is really funny. You go from two of swords to the two of cups, right? Like what's going on? What's going on? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But then two of cups, suddenly the two things are going to fall into place. You're going to find the harmony. You're going to find your path. If this is about you know, you and someone else, right? This is like a lover's card. This is the coming together of soulmates. This is the coming, the meeting of minds, the meeting of the minds, okay? You know, whatever you're arguing or like what, whatever your confusion is, right? Whatever the confusion is, there's gonna be a spark that that leads you into a place of harmony. Uh, you know, if you're arguing with someone, if you've fallen out with someone, or if you're trying to decide between two people, I don't, I don't know if this is romance for a lot of people, but it, it doesn't matter what it is, right? If, you, if you're just not sure how to proceed, you're going to find your path and find your balance later on in the week. It's going to like two streams, right? Imagine if you take two cups and they're both full of water and you pour it into a third cup of water, right? You're, you're pouring the two. The alchemy is going to be happening and you will make up your mind and you will find clarity. Look at this. Queen of Swords. Queen of Swords. Finding clarity, knowing what you want. The Queen of Swords sees through the darkness, right? She's this beautiful snowy owl on this deck. Flying through the night with perfect clear vision, with perfect clear sight, knowing exactly what she's going after, knowing exactly what she wants. Um, ooh, it's so interesting getting the Queen of Swords next to the Two of Cups because... <sighs> I, I, I really get the impression that for a lot of people watching this, this is to do with romance, but it, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, like for me, this isn't about romance, right? Um, but I feel like it is for many people, but whatever you're torn, right? Whatever you're torn about, whatever this, whatever the two of swords is representing, right? Whatever fork in the road, whatever confusion, whatever lack of clarity, it's coming into harmony and balance, but... I feel like <laughs> that there is two distinctly different ways that this is gonna go. Like if I were to do a pick a card reading on this, um, I mean, shit, maybe I'll actually do that because I feel like there's two distinct ways this is gonna go. For some people, walking away from something, 
walking, some people you might be walking away from two things. You might take this Queen of Swords energy and you go, okay, say if you're trying to decide between two people to, to, to be in a relationship with, with, right? You might pick one or the, over the other, or you might walk away entirely and go like, no more dating for me, no more romance for a few months, right? For a little while, no, or like neither, neither of this is for me. You could look at the two things and it's like the, the harmony comes into place when you realize that the, that the harmony is within yourself and you can completely walk away from it. Um, like walk away from the situation entirely. Um, for other people, this is going to be really understanding that one of these two things is for you, you know? Um, it's very strange, very strange. I'm actually going to do... <laughs> um, just, I don't know, I'm going to do a, like a tiny little pick a card thing because I feel like there's set two such distinct paths that this can go for you and I'll let you pick... So this is, here's, we're going to have one and then we're going to get two different messages about, <laughs> well, okay. Death literally jumped out. I can't make that the, I can't make that the other one, right? I still need to pick a card. <sighs> okay. I'll give you a sec <laughs> to pick between these two and then I'll talk about why this death card jumped out. Okay, so if you picked card number one, card on the left, five of swords, okay. <laughs> you guys are walking away from it all. Walking away from it all, like done, done, done. So done, it might come with a feeling of defeat, right? <laughs> death something is done something is over um so it's almost like the fresh start you were looking for at the beginning of the year might come later this week right and what's for the uh, people who picked number two <laughs> uh facing your fears facing your fears nine of swords the thing that you fear the most is the sorry I'm uh, it's this feeling of flying at night right flying in the dark searching for something seeking for something and you're afraid that you can't find it you're afraid that you'll never find it but it's right there in front of you. It is right there in front of you. So for you guys, picked if you guys picked card number two, you're the you're the people who are realizing that you know your other lovebird is right in front of you. The thing you want is right in front of you. And for you guys, it's just adjusting your mindset so that you can see that what you want is right in front of you. And and it's like it, it's just you couldn't see because it was dark. Right, but now you're having the vision of the owl, so you can see what is right in front of you. Okay, so <laughs> it was a uh, card number one here, walking away from everything. The five of swords is like like a donut. It's like a donut energy. It's clearing out the center. The center is being cleared out. Death card jumped out. <sighs> this applies to like everybody, right? This this transformation. This transformation. I feel like some of you might have felt like you missed your chance to transform. You missed your new beginning. Maybe like disappointed with how the holidays went, disappointed with how the New Year's went. Nah, but it's like this transformation is still coming. For some of you, walking away entirely from a situation because again, you have your new vision, your new eyes, and you're getting like the fire in the flame is what I want to say, but it doesn't, what does that even mean? The fire in the flame? <laughs> um, maybe that means something to somebody, but your fire is being ignited and you can see your situation with new eyes and then you leave it entirely to go onto your greener pastures. And for others of you, it's like getting over your fear of the dark, getting over of this fear of never finding it, right? If you're seeking something that you've never been able to find, just know that it's right in front of you and you just need to like turn up the brightness dial, right? Just turn up the brightness, turn up the brightness, turn up the light and then you'll see it right in front of you. And it's just a matter of coming out of your own shadows and facing your own fears facing your own fears after you face the fear. You have to face the fear of the darkness first. You have to face the fear of feeling like you'll never find what you want. Face that fear first, get comfortable with it, look it in the eye, and then you find that what you want is right in front of you. <sighs> okay. 
Um, let's just do some Oracle cards. So yeah, th th this is such a feeling of like a delayed new year, <laughs> a delayed new year as if things are going to get started towards the end of the first week of January is when we start to feel that shift. It is safe to let go. It is safe to let go. This has a feeling of somebody who packed too much when they went home for, for Christmas, right? Packed way too much, brought all this stuff. It's safe to put some of your baggage down, like literally and figuratively. figuratively. It's safe to let it go. It's safe to put it down. That really reminds me of, just I'm going to use my sister as an example. She has moved from Vancouver, Canada to Seattle, Washington to Kentucky. <laughs> so she's had, you know, two rather significant moves and she keeps finding in Kentucky where she lives now, she finds stuff that she's been carting around like since our childhood, like <laughs> completely ridiculous things. I, I like even old bills, like old phone bills for like her cell phone bill from when she was like, you know, 18 living with my parents, stuff like that. Completely ridiculous stuff to have been, to have hung on to. The stuff didn't even have, um, it didn't even have sentimental value. She was just like, I've been literally carrying around garbage. Like <laughs> I've been carrying around garbage to a different country and then like across the new country, right? It's just, it's ridiculous. So it's safe to let that shit go, right? It is safe to let that shit go. And so <laughs> then you are surrounded by love, right? You don't need all the stuff with you because we carry around stuff like emotional stuff, emotional baggage and literal physical stuff right? We carry it around somehow to make us feel like the, like the love that we are all seeking, somehow that it is surrounding us, but the love is already around you, right? So part of this shift in perspective can be to notice and feel the love that is already all around you, already all around you. And even if you are in a really bad spot, and I can tell by the shivers and the, the emotion in my chest that some of you are really in a dark spot, right? You, you could be literally in sitting in physical darkness alone in like a crappy apartment um, where maybe you don't even feel safe at night, right? even then you are still completely surrounded by all of the love coming in from the universe from you know mother earth gaia from the entire universe just surrounding you with so much love it, it you are safe to go to sleep tonight right you are safe you're, you're going to be fine it, you are shielded you are so so shielded from all of the stuff that you think is out there or the all the stuff that is that really is out there right but you're shielded from it there's this bubble can you feel it feel for the bubble feel for the bubble of love and light that is always around you in every moment it is safe to let go you can relax you can put down your your burdens in your bags and you can you know you can have a nap <laughs> you can go to sleep tonight it's you're fine you're fine you're gonna be fine because this, the energy of this week, the energy that I feel right now, it feels like, uh, it could feel way more serious than it is. Like I happen to, everybody I know has had some crazy shit happen to them in the last 10 days, right? So it was like the most insane holidays <laughs> um that i've ever had personally um you know nothing uh nothing really tragic happened to me but i had like a delay and obstacle delay obstacle delay obstacle it was like just uh so much so much stupid stuff went wrong and i know a bunch of people um like my pipes froze in my apartment my washer broke down um like it flooded the floor my sister's car like is in the shop um it's just like everybody has these st I, I have a friend in the hospital um like <laughs> just all of this stuff right all of this stuff and here we go that's the message for that um all of this stuff has been happening and i know it's not it's not just me it's like a lot of you guys have had like weird just completely weird like series of strange events just happening um and it might, it's going to seem worse than it is, right? I mean, maybe you're watching this and you're like, yeah, I'm really proud of myself. I've really um, been able to like maintain my sense of the abs absurd, like a sense of humor right now is the best thing you could do for yourself is to just maintain that sense of humor. Realize that this is all completely ridiculous and that, uh, and my, my point is, is to remember that it's all energetic. This is all just energy. This is all just energy. So often, man, something I have noticed so much over the past year is that uh, people, everybody who gets private readings from me, you guys, your intuition is so spot on. <laughs> like you, 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 you all need to give yourself more credit for how well you all sense 
the the ambient energy of the moment and that energy can be coming from the ast astrological influences from the like the collective energy and emotions of all seven billion of us on the planet it can be coming in from Gaia herself it could be coming in from your star family you know just all of the different places that all the energies come from and stew around on the planet you are sensing all of them and so everything happening to you it, it's all just part of the abstract energy so you know if your car breaks down and your dog is at the vet right and then you come home and there's an unexpected thousand dollar bill and you're like oh my god like <laughs> i just want to crawl into bed and kind of cry myself to sleep right it's like no okay <laughs> well i mean you can do that if you maybe you need to do that maybe you need to take a day off to like go to bed and cry for a day and sleep do that if that's what you want to do right but the point is is that all of these things going wrong um, or whatever difficulty you're in, it's literally just a reflection of the bizarreness that the energy is in the planet right now. It's it's very strange. It's like th this Venus retrograde, we got all this weird crap bubbling up from the surface. Like literally what I'm seeing is like black sludge coming up from the bottom. But it's actually because that's healing. It's being released. Venus retrograde is releasing so much of this, uh, but it has to come up. It has to come up just like when you get food poisoning and you have to get rid of the, the poisonous food, right? We have to get this stuff up. And all of the weird stuff that happens um, it's just, it's like there's a weird energy wave going by and it, it, it hits y your reality bubble and then it like makes your reality bubble vibrate weird and then your car breaks down and then it moves on and it's fine. Um, so yeah, everything that you're sensing, everything that you're perceiving, it's just part of the symphony of the Earth's energy right now. And this is the card that came out as I was talking about all this, right? The Great Severing. Mars in energy, anger, conflict, and softening to love. That's what this is all about, softening to love. I have a very like personal relationship with this card because it typically comes out when I'm like angry, frustrated, especially like frustrated with the universe, you know, like why is this happening to me or why isn't this happening for me, right? Of course, everything is always happening for you even when, even when you're like there's, <laughs> even when it's bad, right? Even when it's really bad. It's all happening for you and the lesson is to soften to love. Open up your heart center, soften to love soften to love. You might have had experiences like that if you were, um, you know, if over the holidays you were seeing your family, <laughs> if you had, you know, journeyed to your hometown, saw your family, especially if you have, you know, extended family or if you don't get along with your family, that kind of stuff, you were challenged, you were challenged to soften, to soften and to hold non-judgment and unconditional love for that family member, even the one that you just, <laughs> even that one, even that family member, right? I've got one. I've got one of those. I, I just had this experience myself and I, I just had to, I had to constantly catch my judgmental reaction to them and I had to constantly catch that I, I like, I just wanted to argue with them, right? Because I was just, <laughs> I just wanted to argue with them, but I was like, okay, all, if I, if I react to them, I'm just going to perpetuate this and make this worse on myself. So I was like, okay, I just need to keep just practicing, right? Practicing non-judgment, practicing unconditional love and, and practicing seeing everybody from the bigger picture and knowing that every single person, no matter what they're doing, is part of this like symphony that is unfolding. So softening to love, softening to love. Whatever happens this week, guys. <laughs> I, I know we're all gonna be feeling differently. By the time I check in next week, be about seven days after I post this. Um, I'm going to do my best. I'm absolutely setting an intention to do this every week for the entirety of 2022. Of course, I'm going to miss a couple of weeks here and there, but I'm going to do my best because I, this is like, it's part of, part of the learning of 2022. I feel this so strongly. It weaving together time and timelessness, like balancing the paradox of timeliness and timelessness. And I don't know how that's going to go. So yeah, so feel free, please, to watch these weekly readings whenever they strike your fancy. You don't need to follow at all the dates um, that I will date them as, but it's going to be interesting in a year's time from now to see how this experiment, to see where it leads us, because I just, I'm constantly getting the image of like a needle and thread stitching together, like stitching stitching us time and the earth together in a new way i don't know so i'm still gonna be making other types of videos but on sundays i will be recording the energy of the week so i will talk to you guys later i love you